Here at CoreLogix, we pride ourselves on being very, very easy to integrate with. We integrate with over a hundred different vendors, some proprietary and some open source. Today, I wanna to show you just how easy that is. I'm gonna create a Kubernetes cluster from scratch on my Mac. Then I'm gonna deploy the Prometheus operator for metrics and the Fluent Bit daemon set for logs. These are very typical ubiquitous tools that get used in the Kubernetes space. And then I'm gonna export all of that observability data out to CoreLogix. All of this in under 10 minutes using no proprietary software. The only things I'm gonna use are the terminal, VS code, and the CoreLogix documentation, nothing more. So without further ado, let's go. Okay, clock's running, let's get going. I don't even have a Kubernetes cluster yet, so the way I can do that is by using kind. As you can see, there's nothing responding to my kubectl commands, so I can use kind to first create myself a cluster. Kind is awesome because it doesn't use any virtual machines, um, which makes it really compatible with the Mac M1 chip. Everything is done inside Docker. That means Docker running Kubernetes, orchestrating Docker images, which is particularly strange to get your head around, but um, definitely don't run anything in production on it. Um, but it's brilliant for these kinds of use cases. So now we've got a nice empty um, Kubernetes cluster, and as you can see, I have nothing in there, um, just a couple of pods and nothing more. This is perfect. So now we need to get the Prometheus operator and then the um, Fluent D or the Fluent Bit daemon set. So the way we can do that is by first uh, working out what the Helm chart should be. So if I do a Helm repo list and then Helm search repo Prometheus community, that should get me my list of Prometheus um, charts and I want this Q Prometheus stack. So first things first is to create a namespace because it's always good to logically separate your Kubernetes cluster. I'll call it monitoring. Um, Helm install Prometheus. Sit that in there. And I want to do it in the monitoring namespace. So what this Helm chart is going to do is install the Prometheus operator. So the operator is brilliant because rather than manually installing Prometheus yourself, and that means you're responsible for smooth upgrades and things like that, you can just install the operator and tell the operator, hey, give me this version of Prometheus and it will do it for you. Also, you can tell it th more complicated things like, um, I want this version of Thanos across these federated Prometheus instances. Um, and, and that gives you a really powerful operational leverage because you can deploy things in the best way without having to know specifically what the best way is. Um, I'm a big, big fan of Kubernetes operators. So now if I run uh, my all namespaces command again, you can see that I've got a bunch of Prometheus uh, pods coming up. So while that's running, let's get the Fluent bit operator uh, moving. So same deal again, it's under Fluent. Okay, search uh, Helm search repo, Fluent. So now we've got a list of Fluent slash Fluent bits. So we wanna get that. So it's the same thing again. Let's create a namespace. Again, logical separation is always good. Uh, Helm install Fluent bit, we'll call it. So this should be nice and fast, because even though it's a Helm chart, the Helm chart is just a daemon set um, and some configuration. So now we've got this in place, we need to configure our Prometheus instance. So how do we set up our Prometheus for external uh, shipping um, into CoreLogix? Dead simple, there's an integration page on the send your data section here in the CoreLogix UI. Um, if we open up the Prometheus UI, um, we can see here that the uh, Prometheus instance is all ready and running. So um, we pull up this configuration here is what we need. And what we need to do is download the Prometheus CRD. So the way to get that is to get Prometheus monitoring. We can see that we've got one here with the called Prometheus about a thousand times. That's uh, one of the side effects of operators and Helm charts, unfortunately. So get Prometheus, this one in the monitoring namespace. I want the output as YAML and I want to write that to a YAML file. Um, so I have VS code here. I can see that I have this in place now. So this is the actual uh, Prometheus CRD that created our cluster using the um, operator. So we've got that there. We wanna take this block and place it into here like that. Now the remote write URL is really easy to find. You see this table right here. Um, we can pull that out there. and paste that in there, lovely. Next is the customer name. Uh, you can use your team name for that. So Chris, team four, and the private key. So the private key, I'm obviously not gonna show you, but the private key can be pulled from this button up here on the top right. You just copy that and paste it where it would say uh, your bearer token. Um, so now we have Prometheus YAML, we just need to apply that again. 
prometheus.yaml dash n monitoring. I just noticed it's a typo in the file, so let me just fix that quickly. Um, so apply that. It complains a little bit because I created it using Helm, but I'm messing around with it um, using kubectl, so it's warning me. But this is fine for the purposes of a demo. We're doing okay for time right now. So um, that means that we have now configured Prometheus. Prometheus automatically picks up its config. So now we need to do the same thing for Fluent Bit. So how do we do that for Fluent Bit? Um, Fluent Bit has a config map. So it's a Fluent Bit config map there. So if we just same deal again. Uh, so Fluent Bit's right here. And as you can imagine, we just follow the same pattern again. So Fluent Bit's up here. This integration's lovely and in place. So first thing we want to do is take that configuration right there and paste it in here and hope that VS Code preserves indentation. Nope, it doesn't care that I'm on the clock. Um, so we bring all this in line just to make it look readable. Um, and as we move our eyes down, we can see here that we have an application name. You can call it anything you like. I'm going to call it Try CoreLogics because I am trying to sell your product. Um, and then the subsystem name can be Double Please. Okay. And then the host name there is the cluster URL. The cluster URL can be pulled out from this table right here. So I can see that my team name ends in .com. So it's just api.corelogics.com. Nice and straightforward. Um, and the private key, same deal again, copy it from the top right, place it alongside that header, and once more, a fluent bit and in logging. So it complained again because it's already been messed with messed around with Helm, but um, that's been applied. Her fluent bit daemon set doesn't automatically restart, so we just need to do a restart. Uh, daemon set fluent bit, I think that's right. And then in the logging namespace. Cool, so if I do that now, we should see we have a bunch of pods all running. Everything looks healthy, thankfully. Um, and uh, it should all be configured to push to CoreLogix. So if we move over to our CoreLogix UI now, back to the start again, and go to explore just takes a second for the logs to appear. So while it's doing that, we can take a look at some of our metrics. So CoreLogix comes with a built-in Grafana instance, which is super convenient. So we can add a panel, add an empty panel here, and take a look at some of the metrics we've got. So we have all of our Kubernetes metrics already in place, which is really, really cool, given it only took a few minutes to do that. Um, and try rendering that out a little bit. We've got some data coming through already. So already in a couple of minutes, we've got our data. Now, if we go back to our logs, we already have Fluent Bit logs in place. That was an integration with logs and metrics in seven and a half minutes. Okay, so what have we covered? Uh, we've built a Kubernetes cluster. We've deployed the Prometheus operator and Fluent Bit. That means metrics and logs. And then we've exported all of those metrics and logs to a brand new fresh CoreLogix account that you can set up straight away by going to the CoreLogix website and setting up a free trial account immediately. Um, this is just to demonstrate how fast you can go from zero to observable, how fast you can go from completely in the dark to complete insight into all the logs and metrics that are floating around in your Kubernetes cluster right now. And this works with a myriad of different technologies. So it's not just Kubernetes. Um, if any of this you found interesting, please don't hesitate to get in touch on LinkedIn, on my email, chris.cuniacorelogix.com. We can explore how Corelogix might be able to help you. And also we can dig into some of the great features. In future videos, we're gonna look at data map, flow alerts, machine learning, and a whole wealth of information that's gonna take you from zero to observable. Thank you.